Now let me move my uh, ice liquid crack, I mean uh, ice chai here. And Hello YouTubers, Star Citizen fans. I'm here today doing my kind of, um, I won't say final review, but um, definitely the had the dogfighting module for a couple weeks, have had enough time to log um, plenty of combat hours with essentially everything you see here, and to give some kind of feedback for the dogfighting module um, at this point, as it were. Um, now, I have not had a chance to do any type of advanced configuration simply because we don't have those options. When they do add in the ability to bind your own controls and stuff like that into the game where we can do multi-stick profiles and I can mix and match sets, I'm not relying on uh, drivers and software uh, to create like a single device with what I have to do with a CH control manager right now in order to get that to work um, in Star Citizen. I will be doing more videos. I will be doing dual stack setups. So I'll get another T16000M in here. Um, back when I leave the house this afternoon to go run some errands, I'll probably stop by Micro Center. They should still have four of them left. And probably pick up another T16000M so I can do the dual uh, T16000M uh, joystick setup. So, what are kind of the results after? getting at least five to six hours of flight time with virtually everything except for the control pad. I've only got about two or three hours of it. Um, well, I really haven't used the Attack 3 much down here. This is really, I really had this one um, for dual stick testing with the Extreme 3D Pro since they're both Logitechs. Um, I was trying to get them to both work at the same time, but I uh, unfortunately, the Logitech profiler software isn't that sophisticated. Um, so, you know, this is the Logitech F310, just 20 bucks at Amazon or Best Buy or wherever. Um, it is, you know, a dual stock, dual shock uh, PlayStation Lite controller, but it rec detects it as a uh, Microsoft Xbox controller. I mean, it even has the Xbox coloring and stuff like that. Um, this works. Um, I don't feel that it was adequate for me, at least, when it came to uh, flight. It's just not that precise. Um, but I was using it kind of like a joystick. You can also control your, your looking or your mouse cursor and gimbaled weapons like you would um, with a keyboard and mouse as well, but I didn't try to do that that much. Um, I, I just don't have the dexterity to really manipulate two controllers at the same time like that. Uh, you know, and oddly enough, though, I do it all the time in Battlefield on the, play, or on the um, Xbox, so... Um, but still, it's not... I don't know. Um, it just didn't feel right for Star Citizen, for the dogfighting module. That being said, if this is what you have, it's perfectly usable. It's usable, but not outstanding, is the way that I would describe it. That being said, if you're going to be flying larger ships, I I'd like to see what it would be like flying maybe, I'm not so sure about the Freelancer or the Cutlass, but certainly like the Constellation or Starfarer or Banning Merchantman. If you're flying a larger ship, maybe even an Idris, this might be perfectly acceptable, because chances are, if you're flying a larger ship, you're not going to be quite as worried about precision as you are constant movement and things like that. Um, maintaining a constant turn so your gunners can accurately track, predict, and hit targets um, is generally more important than being able to fly a nimble fighter and get, you know, line up a perfect shot with the guns. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the controller. Next is the X-52. Now, unfortunately here, I've only got to fly with the magnet mod. Now, I have modded this stick. This is no longer the default stock X-52. The default stock X-52 is completely garbage. It is by far 
the worst option I had for controlling ships in Star Citizen. I mean, I, I if I had paid full price, now I had bought this off eBay for $60, so about half the, the normal retail price of the new one. And then I had to do $20 worth of mods to it. Um, now, I've not done this, the tension spring mod where you take, uh, basically uh, cut out part of the top of a CD or DVD spindle um, and then put it in here. I, I'm not sure. For me personally, I don't think it needs a lot of tension. I mean, the CH, as we'll see in a minute, doesn't have a lot of tension on it. So that doesn't bother me as much as it was just the large dead zones and lack of accuracy and precision. Well, buying a set of neodymium magnets and putting four of them uh, and additional four magnets in there to increase the magnetic field strength, uh, doing the really simple magnet mod, uh, which I did a video of me doing yesterday. Night and day difference in the stick. The, the magnet mod brings it in line with at least the Extreme 3D Pro in terms of accuracy and precision, or T-Flight X HOTAS or T-Flight X stick. Um, it still doesn't rival the T-16000M or the CH fighter stick, or the Warthog, um, although the Warthog has the problem of it's an accurate stick, it's not a very precise stick for finite, small finite movements, and when I get the Warthog back from my friend for another weekend here, hopefully soon, um, I will do a more in-depth review with the, the Warthog, um, both video as well as flight. Um, because I know a lot of people like the Warthog, because it is the most expensive. I just don't think the Warthog is... It, it's great if you're playing DCS A10. Perfect stick for that game. Um, even if you're flying Falcon uh, BMS, it's, it's a good stick for that as well. I don't think it's a great stick for games like Rise of Flight um, or Star Citizen, uh, where it is more World War II-ish dogfighting. Uh, in terms of maneuverability and things like that. But, if you're going to buy this stick, when you order it, order 10 neodymium magnets for 10 bucks from Amazon.com. You know, maybe even have them shipped, hopefully, together to arrive at the same time. But again, in order to make this stick work anywhere halfway decently, requires you to void your warranty. Because you do have to open it up you do have to put in those magnets, and when you open it up, you void your warranty. So, that kind of... For being seven years, it seems like they would have caught this little design problem with that force sensitivity, and they would have fixed it by now with a, uh, an updated revision to the stick. But They didn't. And here we are. So, it once you do the mods to it, and the tension mod, I could personally take it or leave it, um, but if you want it to be, to have similar tension to this stick, or this stick, you need to do the tension mod to it. Um, I think that's a lot of personal preference type thing to me. Um, now the throttle, the throttle's relatively great, um, compared to the stick. Um, I, I'll trash the stick all day long, while well, unmodded, modded it's acceptable. The throttle overall is nice and it does have the rotary action as opposed to the linear action as we'll see with the CH here in a minute and some people prefer that I mean I really do like how it has the detents at 75 and 25 and the way that that all operates I like the MFD the one thing I'm not so hot about is that there's not it's not as functional as the CH Pro throttle as we'll see in a minute I mean, this lighter here in, in certain games like the X series, it recognized that as the throttle instead of this. Um, I guess you can map this to zoom in, zoom out uh, if you wanted to. Uh, you know, that's an option. And these rotary trim knobs are great for flight sims. Um, I guess eventually you'll use them for um, weapon select or something. But then you just get down to buttons. You have this eight way hat right here and then frankly this emulates mouse scroll wheel and in infinite scroll which is great if you're trying to emulate a mouse but it's positioning right here I tend to hit it a lot by accident and I start zooming in and zooming out and uh, since we can't 
really bind or unbind that right now. That's annoying. Uh, once we get bindable keys, I will, you know, disable this from being zoom. I will probably try to put zoom here. Um, that will help tremendously. But I've also found that this eight-way hat here, you almost have to use scroll wheel with your ring finger, this uh, with your middle finger, so then you have your your four free finger available to hit that button. Um, but it's also difficult to articulate this as an eight-way switch uh, with, your, with the tip of your finger. I, I find myself oftentimes going up and to the right instead of just up or right, etc. The four-way um, hat on the CH Pro throttle is far, far easier to articulate with, with the tip of your finger. But, you know, you have this button here. This is afterburner, and frankly, I can't remember which what these two do. Um, I would probably map one to uh, match target speed eventually when we get that option. Um, but you can also find this throttle a lot for a lot of times on eBay for between $35 and $50. Um, so once we get the ability to, say, maybe pair this stick for $25 with this throttle for $45, you're talking about a $70, $75 HOTAS setup that I think uh, may work very nicely together when paired, uh, when we can support multiple devices in the game. Uh, and that's, that's one of the combinations I will be testing when we get that uh, feature added in, whenever we get it added in. Sometime between now and version 1, and I think version 1 should be, say, probably around August. So next up, let's just go ahead and... Uh, back here. Do the CH gear here real quick. Now this is the CH fighter stick. This is their top of the line stick. And the pro throttle, which is the only throttle. Now again, when you buy CH gear, oh, and I, oops, sorry. I think it's also important to note that I have the put rudder pedals down there. So I, I do have all three um, pieces to this HOTAS setup. Now, this is a Hotas, this comes Hotas in a box. Uh, you buy that and um, you get the stick and the throttle in one box. CH, you gotta buy everything separately. You gotta buy the stick, you gotta buy the throttle, you gotta buy the rudder pedals, they don't come in a box together. The flip side of that is you get three different sticks to pro uh, choose from. The flight stick, which is very similar to the uh, T16000M in terms of functionality. Um, and it's an ambidextrous stick. Then you also get uh, the combat stick, which is this stick, only with a single action button and a single action button there on the thumb rest in that button instead of four-way hats. Then you get this um, stick, which is the fighter stick, and you get two additional. Uh, you get four single action buttons. You get three four-way hats, this eight-way hat, and this is the creme de la creme, top of the line. And my experience, this setup has been the best experience flying Star Citizen so far. Um, now, if you listen to my gameplay videos, you'll notice that I say that the T16000M is a slightly more precise stick. That's absolutely true, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth here in a minute. But, as far as a set goes, this gives me so much more functionality than just a T16000M. Um, I'm willing to give up just a hair bit of precision. I mean, the difference in precision of this stick versus, that, uh, versus the T16000M is just, you know, a hair's difference. Um, and that additional precision is not enough to give up the functionality that I get with the setup. Now again, if I get to be able to pair the the um, CH throttle with the T16000M, my opinion may shift a little bit, and again, that's another configuration that I will test. Um, but more than less likely, I will be going into Star Citizen using this, this setup. I mean, just watch my gameplay videos. Now, I'm not really trying that hard to beat levels and things like that. I'm flying a default stock 300 in those videos. But I made it to wave 14 with this HOTAS system 
And I don't have everything even configured the way that I would really want it to be. I'm still missing a lot of features when it comes to being able to reroute power. I, I can't really do much in terms of uh, power manipulation or power management or shield management yet. I, I haven't even explored those yet. I've barely got decoupled flight and the ability to, to toggle uh, constab and G safety off or on and off. So, you know, and as of right now, I can't even map the strafing abilities to the mini stick yet. So, I'm not even fully functional on this stick yet, and I'm getting to wave 14 and I'm not trying. Um, that alone kind of kind of decides it for me that this is this is the setup. Uh, it's also the most expensive at $285 uh, for all three components. Now, there are some things I like and don't like about this stick. Um, most of it I like. However, what I found myself doing initially, I had mapped missiles to this button down to, the, to this hat. But I found that since we have the different weapons groups, and this is a different, this is weapons group two up here, and then the trigger, and then I put the third weapons group mapped to that button. I found that I needed to map missiles to this um, hat, and then I have flare, and then I actually have this map road to where it will switch to chaff, fire the chaff, and then switch back to flare, so I can go to flare, so fire chaff, fire flare. Again, these are options that I get with uh, CH things to control manager that I don't get necessarily with other sticks, excuse me, stick setups. Um, and I have this one up here mapped for enter, so I can use it to scroll on the menus. Now here, I use these to toggle, um, uh, well, I use this one for afterburner. I use this to toggle, um, uh, to decoupled, and when I decouple, I turn off com stab as well. And then this, uh, I can toggle my G safety um, with this button now. Uh, and then we have the four way hat switch, which is kind of in a more logical place. Um, everything kind of lines up a little bit better than on the CH or on the X52, uh, frankly. But this four way switch is far easier to articulate in, in absolutes. And I use this to target. Um, I'm, instead of using that the POV hat switch on the stick, I use this button here to manipulate all my targeting. You know, nearest hostile, cycle hostiles, cycle friendlies, cycle everything. Right now, I'm using uh, these two up and down to manipulate the HUD interface to switch to different panels, and then this um, four-way I have manipulating as um, arrow keys, the up, down, left, right arrow keys, so I can inter interact with the HUD interface right now. I don't have anything mapped here yet. And then I can't, eventually this is going to become what operates my maneuvering thrusters. So with the CH gear, you kind of get the form factor and all the buttons availability that you do with a HOTAS. And because this was a full analog mini stick, um, you can use it like a dual stack setup. Uh, to control your strafing uh, in normal flight modes. Now the X-52 does have this little nubbin, but the most you can hope to get out of that little nubbin, and this is uh, to simulate a mouse click, and then you get the scroll wheel back on the back. It's just not precise enough. I don't think it's going to work that well for controlling your strafing thrusters. And the ergonomics to do so is a little goofy um, as well. So, this is my vote for, if you want to buy a HOTAS today to use with Star Citizen, this is the HOTAS that I recommend. Hands down, I did fly a little bit with the Warthog. Warthog's not bad, I just don't think it really buys you $300 more precision and accuracy than this setup. Um, you know, that's kind of my opinion about the Warthog. Next up, you know, we'll go kind of to the other two uh, remaining single sticks. This is the T16000M. You can usually find these at Micro Center, microcenter.com for on sale around $25. That tends to be about the average price. However, Micro Center does sell out 
and if they're not available, then your next best option is Walmart.com at about $46. Uh, at $25, this stick is an absolute steal. And out of everything that I have tested so far, this was the most accurate and most precise stick. It basically uses the same sensor as the Warthog, but it doesn't have that overly tight center springing at the center that you kind of have to force it one way or the other on a Warthog, and because of that, you lose a lot of precision right here. And in games like Star Citizen, the precision right here is the difference between making a shot and not. So it's critically important. At $25, if you're thinking, I just want a joystick, and maybe you want to hold out to see what CIG is going to do, partnering with a Logitech or a SATAC or a CH, and designing a CH or a, a uh, Star Citizen controller, but you know that could be two years away, and you want something for here now, 25 bucks, you will not be disappointed. Those of you who are Microsoft Sidewinder force feedback users, uh, looking for something to replace that stick, this is what you're going to want. Uh, it is more precise than my CH. I just prefer the functionality the CH gives me over um, what this stick uh, offers. Now, you've only got your four buttons up here, plus your trigger and hat. I don't use these buttons very much. Um, I use the throttle a little bit, but I tend to then put my left hand on the keyboard and use the keyboard uh, in conjunction for hot keys and things like that. And you can also control the throttle with the keyboard, so... Um, that's certainly an option. And it's an ambidextrous stick. I have it set up for right-handed users, but put in the other inserts it comes with, and it becomes a left-handed stick. So, if you want to do left-handed stick, right-hand mouse aim or whatever, uh, this is the stick for you. Or if you're looking to spend the least amount of money on a controller, that's really, really good. Possible to go wrong with this stick. It is... I can't say enough good things. And you can use Target, uh, which is uh, Thrustmaster's profiling software that's very easy to use, very powerful um, in terms of its scripting abilities. It's on par with CH Manager. I think there's a few things that CH Manager does a little bit better. There's a few things that Target does a little bit better. It's kind of half a dozen of one, six of the other, as far as I'm concerned, between CH Control Manager and um, Target. I'm a little bit more familiar with each control manager, but, you know, six of one, half a dozen the other. Now, this is the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. This is another budget joystick option. It's been on sale at Best Buy and Amazon.com recently for as low as $20. Um, if you went to a big box mark, this is all they had, and you came home with it, you didn't end up with a bad stick. It's not horrible. It's certainly better than the X52 Unmodded. And even modded, it just brings it up to being on par with this stick. Um, you know, it has all the basic features. It also has a profile in Star Citizen. Um, you know, they co-branded co that booth at PAX East uh, with Logitech. So a lot of people got a chance to play it with the Logitech. Now, it's not as precise as a T16000M uh, or CH. But overall, it's not bad. Again, if you're wanting to see what happens with a, a, a branded CIG controller, this is an option that, you know, if you came home and you said, hey, I have a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. Usually my response to people in RSI chat and other places are, hi, I, I do as well. It, it's not a bad stick. It's a perfectly accepted stick. Now, you'll probably notice I did send off my T-Flight X HOTAS. I'm kind of somewhat kicking myself for doing that right now. I probably should have hung on to it a little bit longer. Um, but this is back when we thought we were going to be getting dogfighting module in, in April, and I went ahead and sent it to one of my org mates. So I did not get a chance to really do a video and a comparison with it. But my understanding with the T-Flight X HOTAS is it doesn't really have a profile right now, and it can't use target. Um, so you can't map your own custom profiles to it. Um, so it's a little bit more limited. If Once they kind of get this whole being able to program functionality into the game and what, what axes, basically once they get direct input uh, and a mapping solution to that, 
um, implemented into the game. It might be worth looking at, uh, especially, again, you can usually find it on Micro Center for about $30, as low as $20. If you're new to the HOTAS form factor, I'm telling you, $20 is a lot better to spend on something like that than $200 and find out you don't like it. Now, obviously, the X55 is completely absent from any of my reviews and lineups. I do not own one. I will likely get one July or August, um, depending on availability. It is a brand new stick. I'm not liking what I'm hearing, though. It, it sounds like um, Satex quality control issues are still there. The, the problems that have plagued the X52 series for the last probably five years. I think the initial production runs of the X-52, um, say the 2006 to about 2008 time frame, uh, seem to have better quality overall, but especially since the 2009 buyout by um, Mad Cat, uh, production quality control has, has just gone in, in the toilet. And it doesn't look like the X-55 is immune from that. And it's been rather systemic from the initial reviews there. And that that's unfortunate. Because um, I think they did a lot of good things with the X55. Um, a couple of other options that you might see people talk about around that you can't find really much anymore is the X65F from Satec. Now, it did not have the um, quality control issues that the X52, uh, say, did. It was a much more expensive stick. It was also a force sensing stick. So the stick didn't move. It, it, it analyzed how hard you were pushing on it. And there's a love it or hate it relationship with that style of stick. Uh, the people who love it will claim that it is the most accurate um, method of input. Uh, once you get used to it, it is wonderful, great, all those things. I mean, force sensing is how the F-16, it's how Airbuses operate in real life. Um, these days. Um, on the flip side, a lot of people just hate it. They hate that they don't get a tactile response. Um, in fact, in the F-16, it's a force sensing stick, but it will move a little bit to give a little bit of tactile feedback to pilots. Um, this is not a, a, an uncommon problem even in the real world models of this. Um, they went to giving it a little bit of action. I'm not 100% sure how that operates on the Airbus, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, I'm still more of a, if it's not a Boeing, it ain't going uh, type, but I might be prejudiced. The other HOTAS setup is the Logitech G, um, G940. It is the last fat force feedback um, gear that was on the market, and I believe it went out of production in 2009. Now, I think the entire set, it was sold as a box, it was HOTAS, um, complete HOTAS, pedals, um, stick, and throttle. Logitech has hinted that they could restart a production run of the 940 if it proves to be popular enough, and it frankly wouldn't surprise me to see that uh, something based on the 940 design ends up being the, quote, Star Citizen controller, unquote. I could see Logitech doing something like that, especially if they've still got all the tooling and the manufacturing equipment somewhere to basically restart manufacturing. Uh, a lot of the people who have the 940 absolutely love it. Again, it is force feedback. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, but I don't think a lot of games have implemented force feedback in the last few years because uh, the last series of force feedback sticks really was the Microsoft Sidewinder and they stopped production 10 years ago in uh, 2003. So, I probably won't bore you with any more history. My lunch break's about, even, um, about over, so I need to get back to work. But, you know, there we go. There's kind of my in-depth analyses of all of the sticks and stuff based on what we can currently do now. Uh, I will probably do a far more in-depth review. You probably have seen my X52 modded. If not, look at my, my nine-minute video on the flying with a modded X52. 
Unfortunately, patch 12.3 has proven to be very unstable for me. There's a lot of graphical issues with the 750 Ti uh, in this patch, and it crashes on me cons uh, consistently. Sometimes I get three rounds, sometimes I get five rounds, sometimes I don't even make it a round. Sometimes I don't even make it really to the hangar without it crashing or, or goofing up in such an uh, odd way that I have to restart the machine. So hopefully that gets corrected sometime because I really wanted to try out uh, the, the apparently now the rebind the joystick space sim so you can flip flop the axes because that's still the major factor I think on that stick um, between me going giving it a eh, modded to saying okay I like it is I need to switch it up to yaw on um, the x-axis and roll on twist once I get that set up I think I might have a, a, a different opinion on the X52 or a slightly improved opinion, but I'm just talking about in, in raw terms of calibration and effects. The modded makes it usable. Without the mods, the X52 stick is not usable. I'm sorry, it ain't. You know, and if you're going to spend the money, I recommend buying the CH. $285. Uh, you might prefer to switch out the combat stick for the fighter stick. Um, having that many hat controllers uh, I don't think is absolutely necessary. I think you can substitute the um, CH combat stick, save yourself about 20 bucks, and be just perfectly happy in Star Citizen. Um, but I'm user number like 100,000 something. I signed up for I back during Kickstarter, but I didn't sign up on the website until like May, June, I think it was May of last year. So I'm like user number 100,000 something. So I won't be a multiplayer for a little while. <laughs> you know, maybe by the 4th of July. Maybe. I'm hoping. So, that's basically my joysticks reviews for right now. Hopefully we get key binding and um, control binding in game sooner rather than later. And when we do, I'll be doing... Uh, hodgepodge combination reviews, and this is what it's like to fly with uh, an X-52 throttle and a T-16000M joystick, or an X-52 throttle and a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro joystick, or the Logitech Attack 3 and the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro joysticks, and a dual stick setup. And I'll probably run out and get another T-16000M so I can do that setup as well. Um, thank you very much for watching our video, or my videos. Um, Please subscribe uh, if you find these useful. And uh, this is kind of, since I'm at the end of this review stage, I will do my shameless plug for our organization, United Logistics and Military Corporation, or ULMC. I will put links to our RSI chat, or RSI um, org profile page, as well as to our website. Um, if you wish to interact and ask questions and stuff like that, please come to our forums. Anybody are welcome, whether or not whether you're part of our organization or not, um, and we do allow affiliates. In-game, we plan to be doing long-range combat escort as well as high-value um, cargo transportation. Primarily right now, we're flying 300s. Uh, basically, when we were all pledging, we felt the 300 was kind of that best balance between fighter, you know, long-range fighter, escort, um, at an affordable $60 uh, $80 price point that most people could afford, basically the price of a new Xbox game or a new AAA title game, um, without, you know, everybody having to spend ridiculous amounts of money, but we also got a lot of people with Constellations, Idrises, oh, Starfarers, quite a few freelancers, especially after this past weekend, um, Cutlasses, you know, we kind of range the whole gambit, um, but we plan to have a very, you know, narrow focus. So if you have a 300, want to fly combat escort, hey, you want to join us as an affiliate, just operate as a contractor with us. More than happy to uh, take you in and uh, show you the ropes and have fun flying together. So that's the shameless organizational plug, and I thank you very much for watching these videos. I hope you found them to be very useful.